Hello, and welcome to Superb Woman Sundays at 7. I'm your host, Janet Neal, the founder and queen bee at the Superb Woman Incorporated. I'm glad that you found us. I'm glad that you've joined us for another wonderful interview with another wonderful superb woman. Tonight's guest is Sharon Miller. Sharon is the founder of SMAPA, Sharon Miller's Academy for the Performing Arts here in Montclair, New Jersey. And you will soon find out why Sharon is a superb woman, a woman who is comfortable in her own skin, a woman who has taken the time to understand who she is, what her values are, what her goals are, what her talents are, and is using them because she is being herself and is putting out positive energy for the betterment of all. That's a superb woman. And that is Sharon. So sit back and relax and enjoy this interview with Sharon Miller and come back next week for more amazing, superb women. Hello and welcome to today's segment of Superb Women Sundays at 7. I'm Janet Neal and I'm here with my guest Sharon Miller. If you are from the Montclair area, Montclair, New Jersey, you know Sharon Miller. <laughs> Sharon has an organization that we're at today, SMAPA, which stands for Sharon Miller's Academy, say it. For the Performing Arts. There we go. <laughs> I know it is SMAPA. So yeah. it is a wonderful dance organization and theater arts. Yes, it's an arts education organization. We're 501c3. Mm -hmm. Um, we do residencies within the public schools, private schools. We do performances, and we, of course, have our studio classes. Right. So. Yeah, and it's a wonderful organization. So I know Sharon for two different reasons. One, my daughter Emily was a student here when she was very little. Three. About three. Yeah. And one of the things that I really loved about Sharon's um, organization was that there were no recitals. And... <laughs> My daughter was not the recital type. As a matter of fact, what she does do, um, Sharon, has um, parent observations, which is great. So you can go. And I have many movies of my daughter sitting during the entire time. So we are grateful we didn't spend a lot of money on costumes and things like that. But it's a wonderful dance education. So that's one way I know her. And the other reason is I took dance here also. And Sharon was um, my inspiration to do more dancing and to get into jazz um, as well as modern dance. And so she has... Um, as she said, she's got dance education from preschool through adult, and it's, it's wonderful. But the reason we're here today is because I want you to get to know Sharon. Because Sharon is a great person and a wonderful example of a superb woman. She is a woman, you know, my definition of superb woman is a, is a woman who is comfortable in her own skin, a woman who has taken th the time to understand what's important to her, what her what her values are, what her talents are, and is using those to put out positive energy into the world. Absolutely what she does. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we were just having a conversation um, before we started this um, because I hadn't heard Sharon's whole story. And so Sharon, tell us how you went from, and you were telling me as a baby you had flat feet and Absolutely. your mother didn't know what to do with you. Absolutely. So it how did you go from this to being a Broadway dancer, an Alvin Ailey dancer, and now having this wonderful organization? Well, out of bad can come good. And mm -hmm. I think that when my mother discovered that I was knock-kneed, flat-footed, and walking in a very strange way, she took me to an orthopedic specialist who, back in those days, um, the resort was just to break a person's arches and reset the foot, or let them just walk in that strange way, Mm -hmm. Or, as this particular orthopedic doctor suggested, give her ballet lessons when she's about six or seven years old. That'll strengthen her arches, strengthen her muscles. Um, she'll still be flat-footed, but she won't walk in that strange way. So clearly my mother opted for mm. that rather than yeah. breaking my feet. <laughs> so um, when I was about six years old, I, I started studying. Um, I, I had been... I was born in Washington, D.C., and my okay. mother remarried and moved to New Jersey. So once I moved to New Jersey, 
I was six and we looked for a ballet school for me and we got a little dinky school somewhere mm -hmm. and the woman that uh, trained me at that school told my mother I had talent, which was not at all what my mother expected to hear because, right. first of all, little black girls just didn't take ballet right. in those right. days. Right. You know, the question would be, what would she do with it? There's no place for her to go because right. there were no real African-American right. dance companies, dancers that one knew about. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, being unconventional as both my mother and I were, um, she took me to Garden State Ballet. I auditioned and I became their first African-American dance student. Wow. Um, I loved it. It did strengthen my feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do not walk knock needed. And I, <laughs> I have strong legs, strong feet, uh, and I have strong ballet training. But when I was about 12, um, the school introduced modern. And my first teacher was Joyce Trisler, who was a very well-known modern dancer and formerly with the Avenale American Dance Theater. Um, the other teacher that I had was Penny Frank, who was formerly with the Graham Company mm. and was a phenomenal teacher in New York City. And they came, both those teachers came to New Jersey and I discovered modern. Mm. where I took off my shoes, I took <laughs> off the point shoes, and I went, this feels so good. <laughs> so that was my, my foray into the modern dance world. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I continued to study. I, I ended up getting a scholarship, thank goodness, to Juilliard. Mm -hmm. And being in New York, ultimately you find access to all the auditions, you know where to go, when to go, where, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I auditioned for Alvin Ailey and I got in. Um, that was the beginning of the professional route. Mm -hmm. the, the Ailey Company is at this point an incredibly wonderful company which is now considered a world-class company, mm -hmm. not a black world-class company. Right, right. And that Back in, in the 60s, when Alvin Ailey first put that company together, it was because there was no place for the African-American trained dancer to mm -hmm. really excel as mm -hmm, a performer. Mm -hmm. And Alvin put together all of these wonderful dancers. I, I feel very proud to have been considered one of those dancers. And I had the opportunity to dance while he was still part of oh, the wow. company. Wow. He was traveling with us, and it, it it was a joy. I learned more in the three years that I mm. was in that company about performing, about discipline, about passion, mm. about how you touch an audience with how, what your voice is. And in dance, obviously, we our voice comes through our movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I learned more doing Revelations probably 3,000 times over three years. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to digress a little bit because I have the great honor in the next two days to go see one of my students whom I had from the time he was 12. He is now, I think, 26. He is now in the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Oh. His name is Shalvar Montero. And he is providing me with house seats. Oh, lovely. So I am going to New York City to see my student. Oh, that's so great. And it, it, it's watching it come full circle. Mm -hmm. I must say that I was able to do this also with him last year because that was his first year in the company. Mm -hmm. And to sit and watch my student mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. what I did. Yes. 20-something, 30-something years ago right. is, I mean, I did Revelations, Revelations uh, mm -hmm. among other things, and I watched him on the stage, and someone asked me, how did it feel? Was it better to be the performer doing Revelations, mm -hmm. or was it better being the observer watching your student do it? And I said, there was so much more reward in watching my student. Yeah because I had given him something. We passed mm. this down. Mm. You know, that that's the beauty of the arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it comes through sharing it one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. And 
that was the culmination for me of something mm -hmm. that was incredible. Well, that's a beautiful story. And that um, leads me into the question about how this organization came to be because you were mm -hmm. this professional dancer and you were on Broadway, seven yeah. shows, seven right? Seven shows, yeah. Yeah. And then how did it come into, you know, how did you get back to this belief in uh, the necessity of arts education and how did you come to be? It's so amazing this the way life can unfold if you just listen to the cues. Yes. If you block it off, you probably won't have, I don't know for sure, but you probably won't have the success that mm -hmm. I have fortunately had. Um, I think the seven Broadway shows they were wonderful. I, I the last show that I did that where my name was on the marquee was exciting. It was Pajama Game, and I was Gladys, the Steam Heat Girl, and it was non-traditional mm. casting again, where mm. I was Cat Calloway's girlfriend, and it was Hal Linden from Barney Miller. Right, right. And you know, I, I would walk down Forty Sixth Street and see with Sharon Miller, and I would go, "Oh, that's exciting. me!" Yeah, and. Then after a while, the, you know, shows close. You know, is character the theater, the arts are characterized by beginnings and endings, mm -hmm. beginnings and endings. So, I did other shows, and then it became there are other shows. You just mm. you're going to do one show after the other show, and you're really fortunate enough to be able to do that because you are well trained. You do do what you do well, but is there more? Mm. And in the interim, I had gotten married, and I was really thrilled to be able to adopt a beautiful little girl. And all of a sudden, living in New York City and having this, this beautiful child from birth, uh, I thought, I can't possibly raise a child here. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband at the time was a, a musician, and... Um, he happened to have been Jewish, and I was African American, and we had this multiracial child. And I thought, where can we go? <laughs> what? Because like you in New York, you can't possibly send your child to anything other than a private, private school, school right. you know. Right. And I thought, I don't have that kind of money. So we looked around, and strangely enough, I was raised in Montclair. New Jersey, <laughs> which is where we are this very right. moment in time, which I left at 18 to go to Juilliard to, and to say, I will never, never. return again. <laughs> but what did I do other than say to my husband, you know, Montclair is a very, very kind of interracial artsy community. <laughs> Why don't you take a look? Because he was born and raised in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. And I thought, he will never like these suburbs. I didn't. I will not. I, but let's go. He went, oh, this is such a quaint, beautiful town. Long story short, we bought a house up in Montclair. <laughs> <laughs> and the first time I got stuck in the Lincoln Tunnel, coming back from an audition to get my child from mm. nursery school, mm -hmm. I thought, I can't do this anymore. Right. But what do I know how to do? Mm. And that was the question. That was when the first question of what do I have to give? What do I know well enough to give? Mm -hmm. And dance was the answer, but then it didn't seem to make sense. Mm. It didn't make sense because, A, I was in Montclair. Right. And what do you do with dance in Montclair? Mm. And my daughter was in nursery school. And ironically, the woman who ran the nursery school knew that I had been on Broadway, knew that I had been in Alvin Ellis Company. She said, would you take, teach a little class? Mm -hmm. And that's how it started. Wow. So as a result of teaching a class at Over the Rainbow Nursery School, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which led to those children growing up and going on to kindergarten and the parents going, oh, is there another place that we could do? And, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. led to, mm -hmm. and one thing led to another, and I ended up with my name on a window on Bloomfield Avenue. Down the street. Which is right down the street, 
which is kind of equivalent in Montclair to Broadway <laughs> in New York City. Yeah, exactly. Um, same. <laughs> but I remember we have this beautiful logo, which is a flying dancer. And the name Sharon Miller's Academy for the Performing Arts goes in an arc. And I was driving down Bloomfield Avenue, and for the first time, I saw my name on a window. Mm. And I thought, this is better than the marquee I uh, saw at La Fontaine Theater in New York City on 46th Street. And I, I realized that at that moment, I had found where I needed to be. Mm. But I hadn't yet experienced the joy of actually following my passion mm. because I didn't, I couldn't experience the joy because I was too fearful. Okay. When you start something new, as you probably well know, you don't have historical information. Mm -hmm. It's all moving forward. Right. And you have to develop a sense of trust. Right. And that is the most fearful thing because you don't know what the heck you're trusting. Am mm -hmm. I trusting myself? Mm -hmm. Why should I trust myself? I've never done this before. Right, right. So you surround yourself with people who seemingly believe in you and you mm -hmm. hope that you're mm -hmm. surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the proper people. What was interesting for me is that because I had started in a nursery school and had gone on to continue at the Y, Mm -hmm. It was they were all not for profit, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I thought that's such a great thing because it makes the playing field very leveled. Um, you can get donations, contributions. You can get grants. You can get, and I thought that's very interesting. I really don't know what that honestly entails, mm -hmm. and. Suddenly, there were people around me saying, oh, well, all you have to do is file for your 501c3, and then you can do this, and then you have to, and, and I went, really? And the ball was now rolling. Mm, it was mm, out of mm, my control, mm -hmm. but it was going in the direction that it needed to go. Mm -hmm. I, as an African American, in Montclair even, because it's still, our world is, um, it, it is it's difficult mm -hmm. to navigate. And there is a difference in races, and there's a difference in the socioeconomic standard mm -hmm. of different races in our community. Um, I wanted the average African-American child to be able to feel free to walk into a dance studio and take a ballet class. Mm. I, that was my goal, because it hadn't been what I experienced. Right. Right. And so being a not-for-profit made that possible mm. because we could reach into neighboring communities like East Orange or Newark where they're, they're considered underserved. Right. And we could offer scholarships. Mm. We could get into the public schools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and do residencies mm. right. and acknowledge that there is talent mm. abundant. abundant. Mm -hmm. in these areas. Yeah. But this is not an area that uh, the, the arts in general right. are not perceived as an avenue for a child to make a living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I say to parents and to teachers, but it's a way to make a life. And that mm. is so much more important in the full spectrum because mm. if you can make a life, you will make a living. Yeah. But if you see it as I'm going to do this job, mm -hmm. it's it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't mean you can't be successful. Right. But the passion that you deal with, the passion that you you share with your students is different when you're doing it because oh, yeah. it's your life's work as Absolutely. opposed to I got to make a dollar. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And so. you shared with me a, a beautiful story about one of your students. Why don't you tell uh, people about your, your student that's at Muhlenberg? Oh, yes. The, um, Lauren Baumberg is her name. And she came to us and she was darling, but she had been a gymnast. Okay. And she said, I really want to dance now. And um, she con continued to study with us through age 18. 
and graduated beautiful dancer, really quite lovely dancer. And she went on to Muhlenberg, where she was a double major in neuroscience and dance. And I was speaking with a, a parent the other day, and I was sharing the story of Lauren going to Muhlenberg and being a double major. And the woman said, why? And I said, because Lauren had somewhere along the line decided that dance could help children with autism. And if she knew more about the brain, she could really affect change. And so now she is getting her master's at Drexel. And the woman said, well, what can she do with a neuroscience and dance degree? And I said, anything she wants. Right. Right. And that's the truth. Yeah. And the, the passion that most of my students find in dance or through dance, a lot of them do not become dancers. Right. They become teachers. They become lawyers. They become doctors. They become educators in, in many different fields. But there's something about dance and the passion and the physicality mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. um, that gives you self-esteem, yep. self-discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you a, an ability, and I'm not even quite sure why, you kind of think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Problem solving is easier, mm -hmm. more creative. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Through, I think, the study mm -hmm. of dance. We even, at this point, we have a, um, a residency in a school in Newark. Mm -hmm. And it started in kindergarten and first grade teaching dance, but with the reinforcement of math skills. Oh, interesting. And so the kindergartners and first graders were learning counting. They were learning mm -hmm, geometry mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of their shapes. Right. Uh, they were learning division. How do you divide a class of 12 oh, in wow. half? Mm -hmm. And so half go to one side and mm -hmm, the other half mm -hmm. go. So it's experiential learning. Yeah. So they realized, oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Our kids are excelling wow. in, a, in their conceptual understanding yeah. of multiply, divide, uh -huh. subtract, spatial directions, all of that. Yeah. So then, of course, they became first graders, second graders. What do we do? Then we decided, oh, well, we'll put rhythm tap. And that will help oh, them wow. to for their listening, yeah. for focus. So then we have kindergarten and first having creative movement with math skills. We have first and second grade having, um, uh, rather, yeah, that's right. First and second grade having rhythm tap for focus and reinforcement of math skills. Right. Now what do we do in third and fourth grade? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So we, we're now all the way K through 8 at wow. math school, and that's it's year-round. Wow. Oh, and we're teaching great. West African in fifth grade. Mm. Um, we're teaching uh, jazz. And we have a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade elective, which gives them um, choreography. Wow. Oh, it's fabulous. So it's I fabulous. found a passion. Yeah, absolutely. So I always say that superb women um, realize we cannot do this by ourselves. This so true. who has helped you on your path? Well, I think... It, it, <laughs> With all dedication, and thank you, Mom. Hmm. Uh, my mother was my first real advocate. Mm -hmm. um, she advocated for me from day one, and she said, whatever you want to be, be the best you can be. Mm. So she was also a, a person who recognized the reality of our world. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't sugar-coated. Uh, the time I was born, and I was born in 1945, um, the the world was probably the way it is now, <laughs> which is kind of really sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's changed. Let's uh, just say it's changed. It's changed. Yeah, right. Whatever. Um, but the way I was raised, and, and, you know, it's probably not politically correct to say this, but this is the way the average African-American child was raised in the, you know, late 40s, early 50s, mm -hmm. is that in order to succeed, you've got to be 10 times better than the person mm -hmm. who's going to be mm -hmm. applying for that same job. Right. Your education is first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thank my mother for giving me that reality. Once I 
started to formulate my own ideas and concepts about the world, I really started to believe in humanity, mm. where we have to, at some point, cease to be the black woman. Mm. We have to be the woman. Mm. We have mm -hmm. to be the best person we mm -hmm. can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes puts me um, in the minority because it's really hard sometimes to stay on that path when there's so many things, so many injustices that you see. Right. Yes, black lives matter, but to me, all lives matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about the people that have helped me, a another woman that I must give great props to is a woman here in, in uh, Montclair, Rose Kelly, mm. who is my current board president, who puts her money where her mouth is, who believes in children, who believes in the arts, who believes in education, and has been a tremendous supporter, not just financially, but certainly spiritually, emotionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Women in particular, I think, need the support. You need each yep. other. Yep. And we tend um, not to necessarily support each other as as I think we can. Mm -hmm. I think this, this forum right here is certainly a, a wonderful testament to mm -hmm. you because women, we still struggle. We're, mm -hmm. we're a, yep. We're a minority that's a majority. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but trying to achieve things, um, you know, it, it, in the workplace, getting loans, mm -hmm. right. negotiating contracts, right. there is a stigma that um, un is unfortunate. And when you find a strong woman um, like a Maya Angelou, mm. like an Oprah Winfrey, they are not, you know, I, I can't go high Oprah. I wish I could, but, uh, you know. Well, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but the reality is that a, a person like Oprah Winfrey is a, a role model. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the people that inspire us don't necessarily have to be in close contact with us. Right, right. And so, and then there's one other person that I'm, I feel I have to say has inspired me on the road from the time I was probably in elementary school till now, and that's Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. Because so many people tell you you have to fight back. Right. So many people want to yell and force their point across. But there's a peaceful side of me that I couldn't really find anyone else mm. to relate to in terms of, of a philosophy. And when I heard the I Have a Dream speech, mm. mm -hmm. that was a moment for me that was a turning point. Because I'd always had a dream, right. but I didn't know how to manifest it. Mm -hmm. And there is something about simply centering yourself and saying, who am I? What do I have to share? What do I have to give? And just be it. It's all about the be. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Bring that all together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got that one. It is. And it is. It is. It, it truly really is. is. So another thing that I talk about with superb women is that they've learned to let go of shoulds in their life. Oh, so yeah. you had an interesting comment when I asked you about that. So tell me yeah, what you're I saying said, about shoulds. Well, it's the shoulda, couldas. I mm -hmm. just think they just take your energy away. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I can't say that everyone should think this way, <laughs> but... <laughs> My philosophy is that everything is happening as it should. Mm. And it is our, um, for me, I'll say, my obligation to follow that lead. Mm. So mm -hmm. if everything mm -hmm. is happening as it should, it is not for me to try and control it. It is for me to try re to respond appropriately mm. Mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. what is evolving. Life evolves. Sometimes mm -hmm. life is difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
we are having a lesson when the life is difficult. Right. We should not close the door on that. Yeah. You know, we we experience pain because somehow when you experience pain, then you're going to know when you experience pleasure. Right. And if someone told me one a long time ago, you've got to know in order to know hot, you would have to have known cold. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I should be this. I should do that. I all of that. If I only could have done this, the the reality is that life, despite us, is evolving mm -hmm. day to day, mm -hmm. moment to moment. Be in the now. If you're in the now moment, you can probably experience what you're supposed to be experiencing, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And it's hard to do that because we tend to want to spiral out into the future. And if I could only do this, then I could get that. Right. But this moment has so much to offer and to teach us. The shouldas, the couldas make us envious. They make us feel less than. Mm -hmm. They make us feel competitive. Mm -hmm. And the only person that I think we should compete with is ourselves mm -hmm. to be better tomorrow than we were today. Yeah. And so if I live in this moment and I fulfill this moment fully, then I think I've done what the universe has in store. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you've done wonderful things. Um, both with this organization and and all those people that you've touched. So what's next for you? Well, trying to get through this not-for-profit uh, arts education organization um, maze. <laughs> 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 it, having the, the goal to encourage and, and motivate children through the arts um, is is a very uh, challenging mm. effort. Um, I think it's challenging not because the uh, the art form does not, you know, mm -hmm. uh, really need this, but what's challenging is the monetary side. Right. Mm -hmm. The monetary side, because we're a not for profit, we have to fundraise. We mm -hmm. have to. Um, write grants. We have to beg. <laughs> Essentially, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, what's next? The the dream, if I were to spin out, uh -huh. which I like to do, right. I like to stay in the moment, but right. in spinning right. out, I would love to get to the point where our organization is simply is. We mm. we've sort of um, talked about this this year, and it's the first year it's been talked about, being recognized as an institution rather than an organization. Oh, interesting. We are now celebrating our 21st year. Yeah. That, I think, characterizes an institution. Yeah, I think so. But it's a struggle. Mm. And I think there are a couple of things that I'm thinking about. One is just getting comfortable with struggle mm. and knowing that that is what is. Right. And if I'm comfortable with it, the one thing that that, you know, it's kind of a, a dilemma is that if you become comfortable with struggle, then you're not reaching higher levels. You're not reaching mm. higher. Mm. And I don't want to ever become comfortable with something that I perceive to be negative. And struggle is negative. However... I have a butterfly story, and I tell this to my students, and it's about struggle. And it's about a little girl who finds a cocoon. And her mother says, ah, oh, do you know what that's going to be? And she says, yes, a butterfly. And the mother said, well, let's keep it in the jar, but don't touch it, and you will see what happens. Days passed, the little girl looked at her cocoon, and one day she saw a little slit in the cocoon. She saw a little wing come out and she remembered that her mother said don't touch the cocoon but the little girl saw the little butterfly's wing going like that and she very gently opened it up and the 
butterfly flew out around the room and dropped it. That was my feeling. <laughs> but the moral of the story is the struggle that the butterfly goes through in getting out of the cocoon is what strengthens its mm -hmm. wings. There you go. And so my dilemma with struggle is that I think the struggle is strengthening my wings. Mm. So what's next is more of what the good work is that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Increasing the number of children that we, whose lives we touch, mm -hmm. increasing our outreach programs into underserved communities, and there are so many around mm -hmm. this neighborhood. It's Patterson, it's East Orange, it's Newark, we just, Irvington, just name a right. few. Right. Um, if, if I can be blessed enough to do what it is I love doing, until I can no longer do it. Right. <laughs> and at 71, people say, when are you going to stop? And I say, why should I stop? Right, right. <laughs> what else Just would I 71. do? People retire to do what they want to do. Exactly. And I'm doing what I want right. to do. So why would I stop? I don't know. I probably, you know, they'll put me away somewhere. <laughs> I have four studios here. I was just going to say, there's a spare studio <laughs> yeah, over there some, somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> but that's that's what I see for the future. I mean, I said struggle. Struggle does sound negative, but I do see it as something that just helps us to grow. To build and grow. That's yeah. excellent. And so if people want more information or want to donate, how would they do that? Well, we have a website mm -hmm. on which one can donate, and it's www, which I'm told you don't need anymore. Right. Just S, like in Sharon, M, like in Miller, <laughs> A, like in Academy, P, like performing, and A, like arts. SMAPA, S-M-A-P-A, Inc. It's SMAPA.org, and you can go to our website, you can see a lot of the young people that are gifted and talented and some of the preschoolers who are just adorable. Yeah. And you see a donate button and you can click on the donate button. And um, our dance and education fund it serves a lot of children and we would very much like your donations. Excellent. And we'll put up a slide at the end of this um, for more information. So Sharon, I just want to thank you so oh, much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Such a me. delight to see you again. Oh, and yeah. um, I'm looking forward. We're going to go see some of your dancers in yes. action yes, here. Yes, you are. So I want to thank you and thank all of you for watching this week. And enjoy the dancers. And next week, come back for another superb woman. Until then, have a superb week. By the time we get down to this one, all right, you after you do circle A, 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 then it goes definitely to the Thank <laughs> you.